Hey there, and welcome to You Talk. We highlight stories from across Canada, the diverse cultures and communities living here, and organizations and individuals that help make life the best it can be. I'm your host, Ryan Funk. Radio is an intense industry. Although new technology and new ways of sharing media become available, radio is still going strong. Andrew Johnson is the station manager for 106.5 Element FM Toronto. Andrew and I sat down to talk about radio and our own experiences working behind the mic. I've been in the radio industry for about 13 years now. I started in the humble beginnings in Toronto as a board operator. And what that is, I'm pretty much a overnight gatekeeper, if you will, by just pulling up and down a pot, just making sure the station stayed on air. And I did that for three years. My love was production. My love has been production. So when I got in a, a chance to produce for AM530, which is Evanoff Radio Group's uh, multicultural station, I was producing commercials in Hindi, Urdu, and a couple of other different languages, uh, Polish at one point, and Bulgarian, as well as running shows in those languages. Not being able to speak a lick, but picking up cues as it, as it goes on. Um, then I moved on to G987 as their production manager. I started doing production a little more seriously, got into imaging, and... I uh, met a man by the name of Dave Charles, and he was uh, heading up a team that was helping for. He was heading up a team that was um, sourced by APTN to develop a radio stations or series of radio stations that really focused on the indigenous community. It was going to be run by indigenous people, and it was going to give them a voice in the city. And being a minority myself, knowing the pain and the displeasure of not being able to hear my own music on the radio, not being able to hear my people's music on the radio, as well as cultural, um, just the cultural experience that the black community brought. I was a little upset so that when I could figure out I could do this for another community, I jumped the chance. So I um, started off as their production manager for uh, 1065 Elements FM just doing commercials and then dibble dabbling into the uh, the imaging but got to see and this was another big selling point for me it's got to see a, a commercial radio station develop and grow and blossom I'm from Toronto you don't see new stations coming out every day so I felt like when I did get the get this job and was able to see the station start from a concept working in a um, we were in a an office maybe the size of like eight by eight at one point. Now we work in uh, the Chorus Entertainment uh, building in Toronto. Um, we went from having three people to having 20. I think currently we're at 60 people in the company. And the whole point is to make sure that Indigenous music is side by side with any other genre of music. And that was our big goal. That was one of our mandates was to make sure that I could play a Drake. And then right after that, I could play a Snotty Nose Res Kids. And not for nothing, people had this um, preconceived notion on what Indigenous music sounded like. So, me, me included. So going into this job, I wasn't sure about the sound. I wasn't sure about the quality of the sound. But really digging into some of these artists, they can put out some stuff and they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other artist in this country. So it was a, it was a huge benefit to just jump on and, and learn and grow because that's something I, I, I was able to do as well is learn about the Indigenous community and learn about things that I wasn't privy to in school and just get to know somebody else's culture. Um, we've been on air for just almost three years. It'll be three years in October. Um, we're still growing, we're still building, we're still perfecting our sound, but the, just the leaps and bounds that our, our staff has taken in regards to learning about broadcasting and being able to grow as broadcasters. I mean, I feel like, uh, I feel like in that, in that sense, being that parental, teaching them how to ride their bike and then going off which is great because I'm seeing such leaping bounds through our announcers and our other staff. It's amazing. Having that representation cannot be o overstated. And like just those, the cultural differences, just seeing your culture represented, whether that's in exactly on social media, the internet through uh, music is, is fantastic. And it can be really hard for someone to the outside to understand you know why it's like oh well this music is on the the top 40s why not just listen to that it's like well it kind of hits a, li a little differently when you uh hear your own stuff 
you're so right. I mean, it's funny. We have 25% indigenous content that we play. So just that, that's one in four songs. So just that sprinkled in, it's just enough for you to go, oh, I haven't heard that before. That's hot. And what that's what sets us out from the chums, from the Rogers, from the bells of the world who are playing the stuff that we're playing. The only difference is we're bringing you something new, fresh, and we think that can slide in and match toe to toe with the other stuff that you're listening to. That's the secret sauce, we call it. 13 years in the uh, radio industry. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I've just kind of have my toe dipped in uh, the media <laughs> so far. So what can you kind of share with how it has shifted over those 13 years, not only with technology and trends, but just your own personal experience as well. This industry is forever, forever changing. It's forever growing, it's living, it's breathing. It's something that constantly changes. And if you don't have your finger on the pulse, it'll leave you behind. Um, hunger, you have to really want this. You have to really have a passion and a love for this industry or it's the worst because you're working for minimum wage and you're and you're working the grave man shifts and you're you're working eight 12 13 hour days and you, you really see it kind of change and grow i think social media was probably the biggest change i saw in the industry when i got in the, i think the only thing that was really around was uh, facebook and even then it was only, it was locked into only people with university or college uh, logins. You couldn't really open it up to the public. So a lot of the promotional bases and the use were traditional means. So your bus sightings, your, your billboards, your word of mouth, your street teams. That was the only way you were really getting your word out there and TV commercials. But seeing the, just the massive conglomerate that is social media helped shape what radio is now because it it is intertwined your announcer still needs to be fluent with all social media because when i got into the industry the announcer was just above this or just below the celebrity it was an unattainable guy that you could never call you it was almost impossible to win contests you just couldn't get a hold of anybody um seeing the way it's shifted now it's now a conversation it's not me talking to at you it's me talking with you now right and that's the whole, the art has changed in itself. I'm not giving my big radio booming voice and talking to you like this, 17 past the hour, da, 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 da. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. It, people don't like to be barked at. People want a conversation. At the end of the day, I tell my staff, the goal is to have a listener say, man, I'd really like to get a beer with that guy. Or man, I'd really like to get a coffee with that guy. Feel like you know me. And if you feel like you're part of my family and you, me and you are in this together, you want to make it so that the world feels a little smaller and where your company on your long commute to Toronto into whatever city or suburb you're coming from. Um, so the whole transition that we've seen is it's gone from talking at you to talking with you, being somebody of a almost inattainable, in a touchable field to somebody who I want to have a full conversation on social media. I could ask you, Hey, what are the top five best burger joints in Toronto? And then you say, oh, it's five guys. Oh, it's Burger Piece. Oh, I like McDonald's. Someone's going to be, and you have that announcer interaction to be able to have, talk to you and say, man, I was at five guys last week. I almost got sick trying to eat that triple fatty, right? Now you know something about, um, we call it giving primals, giving these, just these um, feelings to the listener that like, a, yeah, I can relate. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, that was funny. One time I, it, it draws out a conversation. You're going to go to work. You're going to sit around the water cooler. I don't know if anybody really sits around a water cooler, but you're going to go to work and you're going to talk about, man, these guys were talking about the five best burger spots. Can you believe somebody said McDonald's? And now I've got a conversation. Now I've got interaction with you. And I think that's the biggest change that's happened in radio in the last 15 years is the introduction of social media and how it's integrated the announcer to really connect with the listener on a different level. Yeah. One of the things I was taught was to imagine the person you're talking to right behind the microphone that yep yeah just pretend there's a person that you're talking to in order to make it feel more organic and real mm -hmm. like you said not those radio announcer voices uh, i mean i have a yep. little bit of a different experience i tried the the anchor part back at uh, golden west i had the five <laughs> to ten shift on saturday so <laughs> Basically, yep. no no one's listening. I could do whatever I wanted. but uh, So that was just a good practice. And then I shifted to to news where it's, once again, a different 
aspect. It's a different field and a different beast. Yeah, yeah. You're correct. But yeah, social media, that more personable relationship yes. with someone. And I think that's probably why we've seen a huge blow up in podcasts. Everyone has a podcast. Everyone, well, I shouldn't say everyone. Lots of people are listening. No, you're right to say everyone. A lot of people have podcasts. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people listening to podcasts. And it's just, mm. I, I love just on a long car ride, popping in a podcast and just seeing what people are talking about. You know what? It's funny. Listening to the radio for this many years as a industry professional instead of a listener, because I can't just listen anymore. I can't just simply enjoy. I'm like, oh, that was an all right break. Oh, why did they put that song there? What? It almost consumes you. So I do reset with podcasts a lot. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, and I think the the blow up on podcasts is the same way that the music industry is blown up. The accessibility, the equipment's cheaper. And there are programs there that you don't have to go to a studio and spend $200 an hour to, to be an artist. The same way you don't have to go to school for two years and grind and work that grave shift. Now I just got to go to Amazon and buy a $70 compressor mic or a Blue Yeti and grab Adobe Audition for $20 a month or Audacity for completely free, get my buddies around with a couple of mics, and now I've got a podcast. Now it's a, oh, we've got content that we want to share with the world, which I think is amazing, but I don't think it will defeat radio because radio still has that local community feel. It still has got the traffic. It's still got the weather. It's still got personalities who have trained and molded their craft over years to be able to do this and give um, a very um, pure product, if you will. Yeah, like yeah. Just something that's just genuine, just something that's light, just something that's been refined. It's one thing shooting hoops in your in your backyard. And it's another thing, you know, playing for the NBA. It's a completely different field, it's a completely different type of game. So I do uh, I do love the fact that people are expressing themselves with podcasts because just like music, I love expression. And sometimes you'll find some gems. Um, but I don't think it'll ever really get rid of radio as a whole. I think radio will do the same thing it did with social media and make a little bit of a shift to start um, introducing podcasts. You've seen it already, and morning shows have their own podcast now. And um, I know that Rogers has a podcast network that they've been developing over the last five years. And it's really starting to reconstruct and reshape the industry as a whole. Yeah, there's uh, definitely the flexibility there in radio. Like, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, it, this is not going to kill it. I think throughout history, we've seen, like with the invention of television, they're like, it's going to kill radio. Uh, yep. Cable, satellite, it's going to kill radio. The internet, streaming, it's going to kill radio. It hasn't. Radio is still here, and it's just a very pure form uh, of entertainment that you can get. You just yeah. go in your car pop onto a station and you can yeah. experience both music, find out about your community. Like you said, it's, I, I think radio is amazing. Very competitive, very competitive. 13 years in the industry, you've adjusted through it. What first attracted you to want to get into radio? And we can both share our uh, yeah, it's stories. Good. This is a pretty funny story. So uh, I used to rap. I used to, uh, I was working with a, a, a crew out uh, just outside of Toronto um, we were doing fairly well. We were doing live shows. People were really digging us. And I didn't know how to get my music on the radio. Um, I was also an actor at the time. I was doing um, small sitcom shows. Um, I was doing independent films. And I was doing a lot of theater work. And I wanted to go into that route. And I, like anybody, goes to their mother. It's like, yeah, I'm going to college, going to university for, for acting. But we, but we know you can act. Why are you going to pay 20 grand? For someone else to tell you you can act go and get a backup and then if you feel like after you get your diploma or your degree if you feel like going back into acting go ahead right i'm like all right well i mean i'm doing this music thing and i thought it was really something that i could really thrive in so i'm like i need to figure out how to do it i'm just gonna go to school for it it's two years maybe i'll make some connections and then during that i kind of just fell in love with like the the, the process, like anyone else, when you jump into it, it's either you're on air and that's the only thing you can kind of envision when you sign up for radio. You don't know about the sales and the production. I used to love making music. So learning production tricks and um, music scheduling and all of these other like behind the scenes jobs that really are the bones and the brain of the operation of the body that is radio. Um, Learning that, I just kind of fell in love with just uh, the production, making a cool commercial because it was a lot like acting. 
I would take what I learned from acting and voice acting, and then I would just do accents and funny voices on commercials, and I would just switch it up. And um, it's actually funny when I uh, I had a hard time getting an internship. Uh, I got an internship. They loved me, but they didn't have anything for me. And then I te- I started teaching drama. I taught drama for a year while waiting for a radio job. I was teaching across Canada, so they'd fly me out to different provinces. I'd teach like a six week course, and then I'd be back to a different province. But um yeah it was just one of those things where i'm like well i didn't want to give up on it i gave it a shot uh, i took a pay cut took a big pay cut to, to jump into radio but I haven't looked back since it's just been something that i've absolutely loved it's that weird feeling about waking up and not saying oh, man i have to go to work that i i never want that feeling i never want that i don't want to get up feeling i want to be able to get up at six in the morning and be like all right got a 13 hour day let's get it right that's the kind of guy i am why I was on mornings for a long time because I'm super chipper. What about yourself? How did you uh, jump into that? So a lot of that is very relatable, understanding the, you know, being excited. There were moments where I thought, ugh, this sucks, like staying up till midnight or coming in at 3 a.m. because there's a freak uh, blizzard that I have to cover. But now that I'm out of that kind of life and transitioned, though I, I'm really loving what I'm doing at U Multicultural. There's just something about that crazy always on call mindset that, mm-hmm. that I miss. And it's something I, in the future I'd love mm-hmm. to get back in. But for myself, um, I was working as a bartender at the time back mm-hmm. in uh, Winkler. And one of my colleagues had to, for one reason or another, had to step out of a a fashion show for I think it was South Central Cancer Resource. They do a fashion show every year. Very cool. And while there, I met radio host of uh, CFAM, Chris Sumner, and I talked with him a little bit about the industry and just he's super charismatic and loves what he does, and it just mm-hmm. kind of lit a spark. It's in kind me. of ballooned. Yeah. In there. No, it's funny and like I found that. I worked in uh, mornings after, I think, three years. I started morning show producing, and it was cool because I got to be the third man on the on the show and uh, had lots of fun doing that, waking up at 3.30 a.m. And you're right, the blizzards used to suck. December, January time, and it's like, uh, there's four feet of snow and being the first person on the road, and you go from driving like this to driving like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to, but it, it was all fun, and like I've had a, had a really great 2020 and 2021 career wise, I ended up in a um, Radio Inc. magazine in the States as one of the future black African American leaders in radio. Um, it's been a very cool journey. Um, and don't get me wrong, I did have that same, I don't know if I want to work for minimum wage anymore. Like yeah, every person that I know in radio has left radio for a second. I left for a year to build glass showers. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. Can't do these. The money is not good. I'm living at home. I'm not really. So I did it and then realized, oh, this is miserable. I don't want to wake up and lift glass. It's heavy. It's tiring. It's uh, <laughs> it's no good. But it's just um, being in this position and something about having the mentorship program. That's something I should mention about Element FM. When you're a non-Indigenous like myself, you're uh, contracted to what's called the Sunset Clause. So the whole goal for for First Peoples Radio, so 106.5 and 95.7 in Ottawa, is to be as mostly ran and Indigenous ran as possible. So after three years, I'm supposed to download what I can into an Indigenous person to then take my job, which I think is amazing because I set out to train and build and grow a community. I am not part of that community. I respect the community immensely. So my job is to teach all I can and what I did learn in that 13 years and then be able to say, okay, um, this is a great candidate. Um, They're missing. They have some holes. How can I help them fill those holes? How can I help them progress to the next stage of broadcasting so that they can compete in a Toronto market, which is one of the most competitive markets in Canada? Yep. Dare I I say North America? Dare I say North America? I mean, there's New York, there's LA, there's Vancouver, there's Quebec, and then there's Toronto as well. And then they've got some other cities in the states that I'm not mentioning. But it's not an easy, it's not easy to start a a station in this area when you've got Q107 for rock, and you've got Chum FM, and you've got Kiss, and you've got Virgin, and you've got CHF1. These people who have been embedded into the community in the city for so many years. 
So it's just about reaching new people, giving somebody something new to look forward to, and um, really just helping that community bring up, grow, and then I ship off to whatever's next for me. Yeah, and I think that's a great thing for the ecosystem of radio, having people kind of shuffle around constantly because things get stagnant if you stay in one place for Mm -hmm. too long. And I've noticed that in a lot of smaller stations out in rural areas. They don't evolve, Mm -hmm. they don't change, and people don't get excited about them. The same morning guy you've heard for 60 years, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's... You, you want something fresh. You want something new. You want something exciting. As I think that the generation before me is so different. I think that the generation after me is so different. So there's that to be that time where you then have to pass the baton or pass the torch and allow new broadcasters to open up lanes. Because I know that's one of the biggest uh, issues in the industry as a whole right now. You've got everyone coming into this, but you don't have anyone leaving the industry. It's hard to get your break. It's hard to get your 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 start if you are a producer and you live especially in toronto you've got a guy with 20 years experience that isn't going to go anywhere which i get and i understand but again i've also been on the other side of the wheel where i just need someone to give me a shot right and that's uh so it's hard with the rural markets and um the way radio is going, which I'm not really enjoying too, is a lot of it's a lot of syndication now. So you got the big bells and the big Rogers are buying 10, 12, 14, 15 stations and then saying, all right, I'll have two morning shows spread across the 13 stations, right? So people are losing opportunities. People are losing the ability to get into a place that's in a smaller market. Because if I grab, you know, Medicine Hat, Alberta and little parts of Calgary and little stations in Whitehorse. And I'm in one big company, but I just say, okay, well, to save costs, how can I make it so that I'm run as most efficient? Okay, I'll get one really good producer that can do four stations at once where someone doesn't really get the chance to learn. So the station, the industry is, is getting to a crossroads and I think it'll go one more towards a podcast and two, some a little more syndication as long as the small guys hold out and continue to put out great content like you channel and like element fm yeah and, and, and things like that it, it, when it's kind of consumed by a large conglomerate it can get a little homogenous at times it when really you can. hear the same voice over several stations you're like this all because you want to listen to different radio stations for the different spice of it all exactly you listen to this one because oh, I love this announcer. Oh, then I'll turn tune into this one because I like this genre uh, of music. Like, that's that's the whole purpose of radio, being able to hear all this uh, variety. And yeah. Exactly. And if it just turns into copy-paste, it's not fun. Exactly. I treat, it, I treat it like food. Like, I can't eat burgers every single day. I'm going to get sick. That's just how I am. I'm going to say, well, oh, what's that Mexican place going to be like? Or what's that indigenous place going to be like or what's i need to have and sample all of that and i think people are starting to get more open to the reality that it's a sample you want to sample you want to get out and try new things yes you want to stay and don't get me wrong i do want my listeners to continue to stay with us and uh and and love and keep growing with the station but i mean we offer a healthy mix that's that's just us but i'm saying with other stations it's nice to be able to sample different sounds different dialects if no one just likes one genre of music you at this time and age you, you like different things and as long as we remember that we keep kind of um keep supporting our local stations and keep coming out to events and the station keeps doing stuff for the community which is one of the big things and that's what i love about working for a station we can get out in the community we can get involved and make a difference i mean covid has kind of made a challenge it's of kind of, of yeah things. it's made it it's made it very challenging but i've realized that virtual things still happen look how virtual concerts have gone look how um just meetings and look i'm able to see you talk to you and be able to be on your show right so there are ways to kind of get around it, but that human contact, that getting out in your community and actually being involved is just something that you just can't replace. It's doing a good job, but it's just not something that can be changed or switched out. That's something I found I desperately desired, not being able to see anyone for like 17 months, what was it? But, you know, finally being able to go out interact with my friends has been amazing and i can't wait to 
experience all the festivals and culture he- here in Winnipeg that I've, because I've lived in Winkler before, I never got to experience it, and then COVID, but now I am ready for that. And yeah, it's the role of us as media and, and radio to kind of highlight those different festivals. And then at the same time, we can also enjoy them. <laughs> and that's the thing, that's always been the the thing about radio is perks, like going to the festivals and meeting people and seeing great music and seeing great artists perform and eating great food. Like I'm in Toronto. I'm in one of the most multicultural cities in the world. So I can go to a, you know, I can go to a, a food festival, like a taste of the Danforth and be able to sample Greek food. And I can go to a jerk fest and be able to eat Jamaican food. And I can have all of these opportunities to kind of, see the city and experience the city and radio stations kind of open that lane up for you. It's uh, I hope it gets to some normalcy. I mean, it's been the first time I went out, I forgot how to talk to a waitress just to be able to say, Hey, uh, I'd like this and that. And like the pandemic has really kind of stunted people's social views. So I think that's where radio and we've seen it in the numbers that it kind of slightly went up as well because people missed that companionship. They wanted to, to listen to somebody talk, um, someone to kind of, I mean, me, I'm comfortable. I've got my family here. But if you're sitting there by yourself in a house, it's, uh, it was a long time, right? So radio did help with that. What is one standout moment for you within your radio media career? What What is that one story? Ooh, ah, goodness. Let's see. Uh, definitely launching, launching a radio station was probably the coolest thing I've done in radio. Just being able to see it from like, okay, here are the CRTC objectives boom and then uh going into seeing everything build up and break out um a good question i've met a ton of celebrities i got to meet snoop dogg which was really cool um mccannon pink Katy perry i worked at a very popular radio station for chr stuff um yeah you know what honestly just launching a radio station is pretty cool just to be able to say okay we're going live now being able to hit that button and have something that I produce be the very first thing that anyone ever has heard on that radio station. Uh, Yeah, that's uh, probably my biggest one. My biggest one. I mean, I've met celebrities. I've had fun. I've partied. I've I've, I've done, I've done okay. I've done okay with my 13 years, but uh, yeah, launching a a new radio station in the city was the highlight. Yeah. Becoming the captain of a a ship is never a a bad objective. Right. I mean, it's, it's scary at first. I mean, the first time you drove, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. But I mean, confident in the team, I'm confident in the crew. And I just think that um, Elements FM is the right fit for the city. That's the right fit for the culture. And it's going to be uh, a good a good example of what we can do as a community to help build another community up. What advice would you give people kind of getting into the industry now, listening to this conversation, or just getting that spark of inspiration, hearing an anchor over the radio and want to get into never ever ever stop trying to learn and grow as i said this is a breathing living big technology station and most radio broadcast uh schools are two years right so take advantage of all the free stuff youtube is a huge thing i can learn how to mix master i can learn how to build a a thing i don't know how to be a good pd there is so much content out there's newsletters to sign up for the broadcast dialogue radio inc all of these magazines that will keep you in the know and let you know what's going on and find a mentor, find somebody who you think is, is great in this industry and reach out. 99% of the time, radio people like to hear themselves talk. Um, so they wouldn't mind taking on people and helping out people and really just uh, keep learning, keep finding tools to learn. If you're a producer, learn about plugins, learn about things, find new courses. And if you're, uh announcer keep molding your craft listen to other stations listen to other people that you like write a pros and cons list oh he did this great i didn't like this and and make it till you make it keep practicing keep building commercials in your basement uh yeah just keep just keep playing with it and don't let your your skills get stale if you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website i'm ryan funk this was you talk and have yourself a good one.